Just over 11 years ago, I read a Time Magazine article that was titled the, the Tragedy in Sudan. And I was at a point in my life where I really had no purpose, no direction, and felt like nothing I did mattered. And I remember flipping through that magazine and just the images, not even the words, just the images of what these people were going through in the midst of a genocide uh, in the Darfur just spoke to me like nothing ever had before. And it tugged at my heart and I didn't know what it was or why, but I knew I had to go there and, and had to do something to help. And so I reached out to every NGO possible and got a ton of no's. And I, I just didn't, I, I wasn't gonna let that deter me. No matter what, somehow I was gonna get over there. So I went to the AAA in Burbank and I bought a plane ticket to Chad, which is a neighboring country where all the refugee camps were located. And I just flew over there and I talked my way onto a UN flight and just got to the camps and got shook down and in a lot of trouble. But I was able to eventually help and spend about 60 days there, which literally changed my life forever. I gained my patriotism. I, I realized that people in situations like that, born into that, that didn't, didn't choose that, uh, have just a, as much of a right to go after their dreams and, and have the simple things in life like clean water, food, basic medical care, education that I had. And, and I did nothing to deserve that. I was just born in America. And so I came back here and was just lost again. I, I didn't know how to get back to that feeling of service and and what, what I could do to continue to help these people in the third world. And so I joined the Army. <laughs> and I learned about this program um, where you could come in off the street and try to be a Green Beret, which I didn't know much about. But I, I knew that Green Berets worked alongside indigenous forces, and that appealed a lot to me. And so not only was I going to be able to fight for my country and, and serve the place that gave me so much, but I was going to get the opportunity to fight for those that can't fight for themselves. And so I did that, and I made it. And I had, uh, the Army did so much for me and changed my life in so many ways, I can't even begin to try to cram that into six minutes. There's just no possible way. But I'm on my last, uh, I'm on my deployment in Iraq in 2009, and I got to make a decision whether to re-enlist or to get out and, uh, and do something else with my life. And it was a tough one, but I, but I made the decision to go to college. I was 29 years old, and I figured if I don't go now, I'm never going to go. And not only did I want to go to college, I wanted to go and do the one thing, play the one game that I never played in my entire life, and that was football. And so I went to the University of Texas, and I walked onto the football team and, and made it somehow. <laughs> and I found a way to get on the field. I learned how to long snap. I, I, I just taught myself. Um, but I was missing that continued service that, you know, Scott Your Six has been talking about that today, a way to continue to serve. And so I went back into the National Guard and was fortunate enough to be able to deploy to Afghanistan in the summers while I was playing football. And so I would play football and I would go to school and go to class and then do spring ball. And then I would take my finals early and I would leave and I would go to Afghanistan for about 108 days, give or take a few hours. And they would fly me back the day before training camp started. So I would trade in my Kevlar and I would trade in my body armor and I'd pick up my pads and I'd go play football. And it meant everything to me. I got to do that thing that I loved, but also I got to, to give some guy a rest that's over there. Maybe he's got a wife and kids and, and hasn't been home as much as, uh, as he should, you know because he's been so selfless with his, with his life. And so then in February, I got out. I was done with the military. I was done with college. And I was fortunate enough to get an opportunity to play for the Seattle Seahawks for a little bit. Um, it was incredible just to <laughs> come out of the tunnel with the American flag on game day in, in Century League Field in Seattle and stand there for the national anthem and just I couldn't hold it together. I'm starting to break up now just thinking about it. Just because of what that flag represented and what it meant to me and everything that I knew that, that I'd sacrificed to get there. So then I was released by the Seahawks. I was cut. 
and you know, they got to get down to 53-man roster. That's what happens. I gave it my best shot, and it was all that I could do. And I was bummed out. And fortunately, the next day, I got a phone call from a guy named Chris Long, who plays defensive end for the St. Louis Rams. And he told me about this project he had called Water Boys. And he's using players in the NFL to raise money within the locker rooms and fan bases to provide clean water wells to the people in Tanzania. And he asked me if I wanted to be part of it, and I said yes, right away. And I didn't know what I was going to do with it. He told me, look, I, I just want you to be an ambassador or something. If you have any ideas, let me know. And so I thought about it for a little bit. And I was literally on the, a stair climber that night. And I'm clicking through the programs. And Kilimanjaro was one of the options. And so I called him back. And I said, I got an idea. I'm going to take a wounded veteran. He's a buddy, buddy and I named Blake Watson, who he took a knee right in front of an IED on his first deployment in Afghanistan and lost his leg. And I said, Blake and I are going to climb Kilimanjaro together to raise money for those clean water wells. And he said, that's incredible. That's amazing. And he said, what's the connection, though? Why? Why, why clean water? Why, why the military? Why, why the veterans? I don't get it. And I said, because we need a way to continue to serve. We need something to fight for. So many people are coming back here today. So many veterans are coming back here and feeling like they don't have purpose anymore. Like they'll never do anything as important as what they did over there. And 22 of us a day are being killed by suicide. And it's unacceptable. We are capable of so much. We've given so much already, but that's who we are. We're different. We're geared in a way that, that, has to, that we have to have that service element to our lives. And we have to fight for those people in places that, that don't have what we have here. And this is a way to do that. And so for me, this was, this was my new purpose. This was my new mission. And I'm just I'm proud to have Blake going with me. And I'm proud to say that we're going to raise a million dollars, which is enough for 22 clean water wells, enough, oh, every well representing those 22 a day. And, and I'm just so, so, uh, so fortunate to have a platform like this to share this story. And I really appreciate Got Your Six and what they stand for. And I'm Nate Boyer. I'm a US Army veteran.